This video will discuss linear functions. So you may remember your high school teacher talking about y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. The equation for a linear function. But today we're going to rearrange this and talk about it in the form y equals b plus mx. Notice all we've done is rearrange these terms. This b, which is often referred to as the y-intercept, is still the y-intercept in this equation. The m, which we often call the slope, is still the slope in the rearranged form. So instead of talking about y equals mx plus b, today we're going to look at this in a new, fresh way, y equals b plus mx. Let's see how this applies. Example 1. Marty pays $30 for his cell service and an additional $5 per gig of data. What is his total bill? The question asks what the total bill is, and I would say, let's call the total bill C, because we're talking about his cell service. His total bill. So what does C equal? I would say that it depends. And when we talk about a mathematical relationship that depends on something else, we're going to refer to that as our function. C is a function of some other number. So what does C depend on? Well, his total bill, which we're calling C, depends on how many gigs of data he uses. So we're going to say how many gigs of data he uses is the thing we don't know, the x. And Marty's total bill, total cell phone bill, depends on how many gigs of data he uses. That is, C depends on X. So now we're going to look at how do we write the mathematical formula for Marty's total cost based on this fact that we know it's about how many gigs of data he uses. So we said the cost based on the number of debt gigs of data is equal to what? Well, 30 bucks no matter what, plus an extra $5 per gig of data. So that 5 has to multiply. How many gigs of data? We don't know yet, but it's $5 each. Now, there are many ways of writing this. We could say, the way I wrote it in the previous example, was c is a function of x, and that's $30 plus 5x. You may also see this written, c equals 30 plus 5x. Same thing, just a different form of writing it. Also, the book uses a form like this, which says C is a function of X, which is 30 plus 5X. However you represent these things is fine. All of these say the same thing. C depends on X. So our next question is, Suppose this month, Marty used 7 gigs of data. How much will his bill be? 
all we're going to do then is take that 7. 7 is gigs of data. Remember that we said gigs of data was x. So what this is telling me is x equals 7. Just like we were doing in the previous unit, when we know a number, it's given to us, we're going to take that number and substitute it in. Which means we're paying that initial $30 plus $5 each for each of those 7 gigs. Do your multiplication first, then add, and make sure you come up with an answer of $65 for Marty's total bill this month. Example 2. The new petting zoo opened up on Sunday with 20 rabbits, but every day four more are born. So our questions are, how many rabbits the farm has depends on, number two, write a function for the total rabbits. Call it R of X, that is rabbits depends on X. And number three, if we visit six days after they open, how many rabbits will the petting zoo have? Please pause the video and try these now, and then unpause when you're ready to move on. Okay, if you haven't finished, please pause the video and continue problems 1, 2, and 3. So I want to look back at these two functions. The function we got in the first problem about Marty's cell phone bill. Which was $30 plus $5 per gig. And then problem two, which was about our rabbits, which were just 20 rabbits plus four rabbits per day. Now I want to break down these numbers. In Marty's cell phone bill, notice that we had to pay $30 no matter what. It's what we're going to call our initial cost. In our rabbits problem, we had 20 rabbits on our starting day, which means this was our initial number of rabbits. This number, which remember we called B, always gives us some starting value. The word initial means starting. B is our initial value. Now what did the other number tell us? Well, in the cell phone problem, we know that we had $30 no matter what. And what did the 5 tell us? The 5 told us how much the charge changed for each gig. We call this the rate of change. It lets us know how quickly or slowly our bill is changing. In the rabbits, notice the four per day also told us how quickly or slowly the rabbits were changing their numbers.
So just as a review, in this form of y equals b plus mx, b, which we're calling our initial value, which of course has the official name of a y-intercept, and m, which we're calling our rate of change, and has the official name of a slope. Please make sure in any problem you can identify what Y stands for, what B stands for, what M stands for, and what X stands for. Let's look at one more problem. Example 3. The math club makes $12 per t-shirt that they sell at the carnival but they have to pay $40 to register for the carnival. So the first thing we're going to ask are what are the variables? That is, what is our x and what is our y? Remember, our y always depends on our x. We don't have to call these numbers x and y, of course. We can use any letter we'd like, but x and y are typical. So in this case, what are we talking about? We're talking about the math club. They're making some money off t-shirts, but they have to pay a registration fee. So what don't we know? We don't know how much money they're going to make altogether. That's what we're going to call y, because how much money they make altogether depends. What does it depend on? It depends on how many t-shirts they sell. So could the math club lose money on this deal? Yep, they definitely could. So. When we talk about the initial value here, sorry, that's blue. When we talk about the initial value here, we're talking about how much total money the math club starts the carnival with before they sold any shirts. And unfortunately, the math club has to pay $40 to even register for the carnival. So the initial value is a negative number here. It's negative 40 because before they sell any t-shirts they have to pay the $40. Hopefully that will change for the math club as the day goes on their money will increase. When we talk about the rate of change what we're talking about is the $12 per shirt. So if I was asked to put this all together into a function, I would say my let me get the black pen. My total money is equal to negative 40 for that registration fee plus with a positive $12 per how many t-shirts I sell. I could of course also write this in function notation. Great. The last problem is for you to try. Good luck and thanks for watching.